Now, the other thing with the storm scene is now the entrance of a new character. Edgar has transformed. We've watched him take on this role. I, um, you know, poor Tom, that's something he had. I, Edgar, nothing am. He's left this. Lear is raging at the storm. He's in a calm moment and he's back out. And he's going to realize things that he's been wrong about the way he's kept his kingdom and he's wrong about the way he's treated other people. And this has led some critics to think about, for Shakespeare, this idea that the madness, uh, particularly this madness of the storm scene and what comes after, leads Lear to some kind of self-understanding. So those, of, those critics like A.C. Bradley who have this idea that the play is actually about redemption, that Lear, it's not a tragedy. Lear hasn't just made a mistake. Well, he does think Lear's made a tragic mistake in rejecting Cordelia. But here in the storm scene, and maybe through madness, there's a redemption. He rediscovers himself. For these recuperative readings, which I think are really um, difficult to take on board and really problematic, the idea of redemption, and they don't really fit with modern readings, my reading certainly of the play, I get where, where that reading is coming from. And particularly here, watch in the storm scene, what is it that Lear's starting to see and realize? And then, crucially, what is poor Tom? What does poor Tom mean to him? He calls him a philosopher. Um, Edgar is playing a role. He's told us this explicitly, but like Kent, he gets lost completely in playing this role. His language is of lower nature, almost as Northrop Fry called the demon world. This is not good nature. This is the depths, a living hell. His language is highly fragmented, makes the fool seem quite ordered. And as his language becomes more and more fragmented and Lear somehow is drawn to this poor Tom, the fool, some critics argue, trying to figure out why the fool's fallen out, he can't linguistically touch or reach Lear anymore. The madness is too much, the linguistic shift is too much, the shift to poor Tom is too much, and the fool has to drop out. Let's, I mean, these are all possible interpretations, no one knows. But it's worth looking again, what are these realizations Lear's making? Poor naked wretches, whereso are you are, that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm, it's beating down. Um, AO3, there's a great time for poverty and homelessness. plague this time in England and this is easily contextualized within that con within that moment of understanding that visible visibly poor uh, were more evident and Lear is noticing them how shall your houseless heads and unfed signs your looped and windowed raggedness what an amazing phrase I don't even know what to do with it defend you from seasons such as these. And then it comes this big, big realization. It's huge. I've taken too little care in this. As king, I've ignored the poor. Wow, took you long enough. Um, it's it's like he's, he's making these really serious realizations all of a sudden. Take physic pomp. Expose thyself to feel what wretches feel, that thou may shake the superflux, the superfluous to them, and show the heavens more just. So get, get rid of clothes. Why? Why get rid of clothes? And this is crucial, to understand others, to understand suffering. He is suffering. But he's saying, he's realized there's even more than psychological, there's physical suffering. And, and, and he needs to um, get into, he needs to accept this uh, and, 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 and become this. He goes further. He sees a character enter. And he is sometimes played as naked or in bare rags. Again, poor Tom, playing the role. How deep, we'll see. 
So right away, and it is comic, and it, and it is worth thinking about the laughs we saw at the Globe. Hast thou given all to thy two daughters? Have you, is that what's happened to you? He sees only his own suffering. So look, he wants to understand suffering, but he sees only himself. This is terrible levels of narcissism. Excuse me, narcissism. Lear uh, is a fantastically drawn character. He's gargantuan. Even as he lurches towards sympathy, he, that, that, that self-obsession is comic. Here comes Edgar. Who gives anything to poor Tom, whom the foul fiend hath led through fire, through flame, through ford and whirlpool, ere bog and quagmire that hath laid knives under his pillow and halters in his pew, says rags bane, rats bane in his porridge, made film proud of heart to ride on a bay trotting horse over four inch bridges to come to course his own shadow for a traitor. Bless thy five wits, tongues are cold, oh dee do dee do dee do. Bless thee from whirlwinds, star blasting and taking, do poor Tom some charity whom the foul fiend vexes, and here could I have him now, and there, and there again, and there. Fragmented, um, uh, uh, flitting, confused, shuffling topic to topic, topic to topic, running, boom, um, uh, a vision of uh, charity, begging. Nobody gives anything to me, and I live in such harsh and unbelievable um, conditions. Uh, I need help. King Lear, why thou wert better in thy grave than to answer with thy uncovered body this extremity of the skies. So you better be dead than be uncovered in this extreme weather. He, he is unprotected in, in, in the storm. Uh, might as well be dead. And here comes the huge moment of contemplation. Lear says, is man no more than this? Is this, is this what we are? Is this what we are, just naked things? Look at him really carefully. Consider him well. You don't own the worm, any silk. You don't... We don't provide a, a beast with hides. We use the beast. We use the worm of the silk. We, we use the wool of the sheep. We don't give anything to the sheep. Here's three ons are sophisticated. Thou art the thing itself. This magical, amazing, nothing, the thing. You are the thing itself. This naked, shivering man is human. We. This is what man is. This is what humans are. Earlier he said we don't need to be in fancy dress. We don't need a love test. We don't need any of this. This nudity, this nakedness in the storm, being punished by the earth, without being able to use anything. This is actually what we are. Um, this is a huge realization for Lear in his madness. And he takes it a bit further. Unaccommodated man is no more but such a poor, bare, forked animal as thou art. It's unbelievable, the language, the imagery, the sadness. And he says, okay, Time to be naked. Me too. He says, it is time. Unbutton here. Take off my clothing. All of it. Because I don't want... Um, I don't want to, to, to be... I want to understand what it means to be human. This physicality. Now, the thing that happens in 3.6... Uh, well, it's different in different versions. I'm just looking at it as I'm working with you. Is There is a scene in the midst of the storm where, um, where uh, it's actually the folio version. I'm wrong. 
the, the quarto version is uh, 1608, quarto, but there was a later version of King Lear. You see, just the, just the, wait, I should put this here, just the different versions of King Lear, it's so much AO3, I can't even tell you. So there is a six, the plays from 1605. The first printed version um, was the quarto, and that was 1608. And then in 1623 is the, the first folio, and that has a different version. And at the back, we're working with the quarto, I believe. Sorry, we're, yes, we're working, hold on, I just want to make sure I got this right. We are working with the we are working with the folio version sorry I was wrong, wrong I got it we're working with the folio version but it's in the quarto version this is the quarto sorry I'm, I'm wrong this is the 1608 so our book everything we're working from is pretty much the um, the quarto uh, sorry the folio from 1623 we in the text but at the back, there is this amazing scene, which is worth going back to, which is the mock trial scene. And, and Peter Brook reinstated it, and I think it's just an absolutely amazing scene from the original 1608 Quarto, where King Lear fantasizes a mock trial of Goneril and Regan and punishes them and the punishments that go through it. And it's the madness is really kicked up to the top, like he's hallucinating. So think of Nina's division between that notion of, um, or even the blank Dubois, the difference to, between fantasy and reality. This is really happening for Lear now. And it's so intense for him that Edgar um, breaks off and he can't handle it anymore. And he says, and he breaks off to the audience. When we are better see bearing our woes, so betters, like, uh, higher than us. When we see, like, the king gets sad, we scarcely think our miseries are foes. When we see other, when we see suffering in greats, our sadness is not our enemy. It's barely our enemy. Who alone suffers, suffers most in the mind. Beautiful. If you're alone, you suffer in the mind, leaving free things and happy shows behind. But then the mind, much sufferance doth o'er skip, when grief hath mates and bearing fellowship. There is a moment, friendship, sharing pain, this idea of empathy that, you know, we can overstate in the play, but there are these glimpses, these moments of people, shared moments of potential hope in this misery, of nakedness and forkedness. Is there something more than just a nude body in the storm? Well, yeah, maybe there is. If you have mates, fellowship, how light and portable my pain seems now. When that which makes me bend makes the king bow. Um, I'm just bending. He's, he's finished. He childed as I fathered. What his kids did, my father did. Tom away. It's over. Mark the high noises and thyself beray when false opinion whose wrong thought defiles thee in thy just proof repeals and reconciles thee. That will happen more tonight. Save scape the king, lurk, lurk. He's leaving Tom. This is much shorter in the folio version. By the way, the, the version of this is on page 246. And if you can talk about the different versions of the play, folio and quarto, you are doing AO3 and potentially AO2. Why did Shakespeare cut this scene? We don't know, but we do know that Edgar's new soliloquy is another moment where he's sharing with the audience, okay, this is what's going on with me. This is too much. I can't do this anymore. I can't play this role. 
And what, what, what's so terrifically painful about this play is the next time we see Edgar, he's basically sobering up and he has to witness his blinded father walking. And it, it, does, it takes him to the next level. But like Kent, it's worth thinking about Edgar and the parameters, the limits of the performance. And I'm sad. Uh, well, I think that the mock trial scene is something that's worth going back to. And I learned that mostly from Peter Brooks. Um, I would almost say uh, peerless uh, example.